Uh, hello there and uh, welcome back to my new video. So with this video we're going to continue our uh, retrofit tutorial series and uh, I'm going to show you how to send a post request uh, this time. Uh, so far we have used only get request to receive a response from the server and uh, now we're actually going to send or post some data to the server. Uh, unfortunately, uh, because we are using a fake REST API, we will not be able to see the actual data on the server side. Instead, uh, we are going to receive back a response with the exact same data we sent to the server using POST request. And uh, for those of you who are not familiar with POST request, uh, basically a uh, POST request is uh, used to send data to the server to create or update a resource. Uh, the data sent to the server with a POST request is uh, stored in the request body of the HTTP request and uh, not in the URL. Also, uh, I'm going to show you how to use a form URL encoded annotation and the requests made with this annotation will have a application form uh, URL encoded meme type instead of a JSON like the regular POST request and uh, field names and uh, values will be uh, UTF-8 encoded before being uh, URI encoded. Uh, okay, so this is our uh, fake REST API website and uh, this is the actual uh, endpoint which we are going to use for our POST request. So uh, let's open up our Android Studio project and uh, we're going to use the same project from before in this uh, Retrofit tutorial series so you can also download this uh, project in this uh, video description as well. Okay, so let's create a new function here which will, uh, which will uh, represent present uh, post request and uh, let's annotate that function with a post annotation. Okay, let's name this function push post and uh, this uh, function will have only one parameter annotated with a body annotation. And uh, body annotation means that this parameter uh, will be uh, actually used uh, in a request body of this uh, post request. So we have uh, specified this uh, post uh, object and that is uh, our model class from uh, before. Okay, and this uh, function will return a post uh, wrapped in a response. Okay, so inside our repository, we're going to create another function named push post, and uh, it will take a post as a parameter, and it will return a post wrapped in a response. And here we're going to call the retrofit instance, and uh, then call this uh, push post. Okay, and inside our main view model, uh, we're going to uh, create a new function as well. So just pass this post as a parameter and uh, here we're going to use uh, Kotlin coroutines or a view model scope to actually call this uh, push post from our repository. And we will uh, store the result of this uh, response inside this uh, my response uh, mutable live data object. And we're going to observe that uh, mutable live data from our main activity. So inside our main activity, uh, instead of this get custom posts, uh, we're going to call this uh, push post uh, function and we need to pass a post. So let's create a post object and here uh, let's pass uh, four parameters. So for the user ID and the ID, I'm going to pass number two. For the title, I'm going to write uh, Steph Jassan, the name of my YouTube channel and in the body, I'm going to say Android developer, okay? And just pass this post uh, and here we're going to uh, observe this uh, my response uh, uh, mutable live data object. Okay, and inside this if block, uh, uh, I'm going to just uh, log the response. Okay, so uh, I'm going to call the body and convert that to string. And here I'm going to uh, call a code so we can see the, the response code and of course the message as well. Okay, so uh, now uh, I have opened the Wireshark and this is uh, an application used to uh, analyze your network traffic. So uh, I have filtered uh, this uh, Wireshark to only look for, uh, uh, for requests from this uh, specific host. And now when I run the app, I'm going to uh, open up this logcat and I will see the results. So here I can see the actual results which we sent to the server. As you can see, the user ID is number two, but the ID is number 101. And that is because this um, uh, server, fake REST API server, does not accept uh, the ID. Instead, it uh, generates this ID by itself automatically. And uh, we can also see this uh, response code uh, 201. And this response code uh, indicates that the request has succeeded and uh, has led to the creation of a resource. And uh, because our REST API is a fake, uh, that's why we cannot actually see the data on the server. Instead, we have received that data back to, uh, as our response. Okay, so that works perfectly fine. And now inside our, inside our Wireshark, we can see the actual request we sent to the server. And uh, down below, we can check uh, some more information. So as you can see, uh, 
uh, let's uh, open this up and we can see the content type of this uh, request uh, is uh, application JSON and we can see also some of uh, more information from the request header and uh, if we scroll uh, down below uh, we can find uh, the actual data we have sent to this uh, server so let's scroll down below and you will see this JavaScript object notation application JSON so that means that uh, those uh, values or those data or this data is sent in a format of JSON. So Retrofit has uh, converted our data to a JSON and then it uh, sends that to a server, okay? So uh, the next thing, uh, we're going to create another function, another post request, and uh, this time uh, we will add a new annotation named uh, uh, form URL encoded. Okay, so uh, this uh, requests made with this uh, annotation will have application form URL encoded meme type. So if you are wondering uh, what is the difference between a JSON and form URL encoded meme type, uh, well, if you don't specify this uh, form URL encoded annotation, uh, the retrofit library will use a JSON as a meme type uh, by default, and it will send a request to a server where data will be in a JSON format. And uh, if you specify this uh, form URL encoded annotation, uh, then the retrofit will send a request to a server where, uh, where data will be sent in a format of a key and value separated by an ampersand symbol. Okay, and uh, here as a parameter uh, we need to remove this uh, body and we need to add uh, uh, four different field uh, annotations with uh, four different uh, parameters. So this field annotation will accept the key uh, and uh, this uh, parameter will uh, represent a value, okay? So here I'm just setting this user ID, ID, title and the body and uh, we're going to uh, get those uh, values dynamically. So from the repository let's create another function named uh, push post uh, number 2 and uh, this uh, function will take uh, four different parameters, so the user ID of the type integer, ID with the type of integer, title and the body of the type of string. And uh, basically uh, the main difference uh, between a POST and GET request is that uh, in a GET request uh, the data is sent uh, in a URL and in a POST request the data is sent uh, in the request body. Okay, so uh, now that we have created this function inside our repository let's uh, open up our main view model and here let's create a new function as well. So let's uh, rename this to uh, PUSH POST number 2 and let's add uh, four different parameters. And here let's uh, call this push post number two and let's pass those uh, four uh, parameters as well. Okay, so let's open up our main activity and here let's uh, call a push post number two instead. And here uh, I'm going to pass uh, those four parameters uh, directly. Okay, okay, I'm going to uh, say Stevja and in the body I'm going to say uh, Android. All right, and uh, now let's uh, run our application and uh, let's open up a Wireshark. So here you will see a new request once the application starts and we can see this uh, content type of uh, form URL encoded and that's the difference uh, between the last uh, request we sent which is in a JSON format and uh, down below uh, we can also see the data we have sent and now we can see this uh, uh, data where it says HTML form URL encoded and basically this data is sent in a key and value pair uh, separated with uh, ampersand symbol and uh, that's it. So uh, you now saw how you can uh, send a post request in a JSON format and uh, also how you can send a, a post request uh, in a form of uh, form uh, URL encoded meme type and uh, that's all pretty much uh, straightforward. So uh, that will be all for this video. Uh, thank for watching. Please uh, like this video if you find it helpful of course and uh, see you in the next one.